Hi, I would like to demonstrate a lesson that is really meant to uh, show a method of, of how students can really gain uh, uh, questions about things that they're curious about and develop experiments um, from things that look very simple. So, for example, one of the, the easiest things that we can do and with very little equipment is just have maybe a couple cups of water. Uh, in this case, I've got a little piece of metal here to pour it on, a little surface. I'm going to put on top of this wood block inside a tray to collect the water. In uh, this way, the water, when, when you pour it on here, it'll spill off. But what's really cool about this, and something that we see all the time, is when you pour water or any kind of liquid onto a surface like this, you get a, a circle that appears on that, that surface. The water flows out very gently, very smoothly, but at some distance away, it, it lifts up and forms that circle. And we call that the hydraulic jump. Okay, that's the, it jumps up off the surface. And it's not entirely understood why that happens, even though people have looked at this for, for over 100 years. So what you can do with this is, is have students wonder and ask questions and think about what are some things that could change that circle? Um, could it be if I just pour a, a really thin stream of water here, I can form a, a little circle. If I pour it very quickly, you form a much bigger circle. Does the height that you pour it at make a difference? If I pour it close to the surface, or if I pour it from way up here, and you start getting splashing and stuff, how does that change what we see? What if you use something other than water? What if you use a different kind of liquid? Does that change the size and everything of, of the circle that you see? What if you pour two at the same time? And those circles will interact with each other. How does that work? And what changes what you see? What if you put this on an angle and pour the water on? Okay, it's no longer a circle, but you have almost like a, a just a different shape. How does that shape depend on, on the angle that you hold this at? What if you change the surface? What if instead of metal, you used wood or glass or, or plastic or something like that? What if you change the temperature of the water or the temperature of the surface? Um, there's all sorts of things. What if you do this when there, there's wind blowing through? How does that change the, the circle that you see? Let your kids just wonder about things like that. And every little thing that they come up with, that could be a new experiment that they could try and, and really test to see if if what they're thinking has an effect on, on the hydraulic jump, on that circle that we see. Now the, the bigger part of this lesson is to then ask the students to go out, out in the world at their homes or out um, uh, in their environment and find things that they're curious about, find things that look cool or interesting. And then take that very simple thing and think about it the same way. It's the same thought process. What are some things that could change what they're looking at? Okay, maybe it's a pile of dirt that's blowing in the wind. What happens if you change the shape of that pile or if you change the height and the amount of dirt that's blowing in the wind? Um, it could be anything, anything at all. But this is what scientists do. They, they notice something that looks interesting and then they start asking questions about it. What could change? What could affect what they're seeing? Why does something happen? What causes it to happen? And they start doing experiments on that. Okay, they start testing it in a very, very systematic way. So uh, look at the lesson plan. It has a, 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 an example list of things that my students came up with, all of which we could take and change into individual experiments. And the students can do that. Um, get the kids thinking, get their hands dirty, get their hands on things, and start making those observations and, and making measurements on it. One thing that you could do with this, uh, if you do have, uh, let's say, a cell phone or any kind of video camera, is you could take a video of this happening. You could take something, just a simple ruler, 
and have it in the picture so you can you can actually see in the video what the size is and how it changes when you when you change things. Um, all of this is a very simple way to start making measurements, doing experiments, asking questions, and trying to figure out why the water falls and makes the shapes that it does. So I hope this helps. Have fun with it, and good luck.